A few days after the photo op, rancher Mac Brassel pays a visit to Frank Joyce at the radio station. He said, I found out after I left here that that what I told you out on the ranch was not accurate. What the crash was, was a weather balloon. But Joyce says he uncovers Brazel's fib when he asks what happened to the alien bodies. And I said, you know, it brings up what people are talking about recently, the stories you hear about little green men. And in a quiet voice, he said, they weren't green. I think Brazel may very well have seen the bodies, but again, that would be another reason for putting a thumb down on it. While Roswell investigators are able to confirm the balloon cover story, getting what they believe is confirmation of the alien bodies would take much longer. My reaction, as I remember, as I said, here it was in black and white talking about bodies and a disc. When they do find it, the smoking gun is in, of all places, the very hand of the man at the center of the alleged Roswell cover-up. After the debris from a crashed UFO is identified as a simple weather balloon, interest in the Roswell incident dies down and is soon forgotten altogether. But the principals in this drama, like Major Jesse Marcel, never forget. It was not a weather balloon nor an aircraft, nor a missile. It was something else of which we didn't know what it was. Marcel's son remembers his father as adamant the truth was being hidden. I remember him saying later that uh, he was part of the cover-up because he went along with the story publicly, but privately, he didn't. According to researcher Stan Friedman, the U.S. military doesn't forget the incident either. Instead, Roswell becomes the launch pad for what he calls a cosmic water gate. An ongoing government conspiracy to hide the truth about extraterrestrial UFOs. It's clear that there were people in the government taking this seriously. It was also clear that they made a conscious attempt to cover things up. Just a few weeks after the Roswell incident, the National Security Council is created, the president's highest level and most secret advisory group. Obviously, UFOs would come under the aegis of the National Security Council. This is what bypassed the Constitution, the Congress, the news media, and the public. This is where the subject of UFOs went deep and dark. I'm here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. Also in 1947, the Air Force establishes what would be called Project Blue Book, a program to track all UFO sightings across the nation. The Air Force interest in this problem is to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. So many sightings are reported Friedman claims the military issues special orders in response. Air Force pilots were being ordered in 1952, summer, to shoot down UFOs if they didn't land when instructed to do so. And we have General Roger Ramey, by this time a major general and a primary actor in the Roswell story, saying we scrambled jets hundreds of times after saucers. The Air Force investigates more than 12,000 sightings over 22 years. To this day, 700 remain unexplained. But to Roswell's true believers, the real purpose of Project Blue Book isn't to find UFOs. It's to debunk the very notion of them. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, erroneously identified friendly aircraft, meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberration. Everything that was reported could somehow be explained as the planet Venus, unidentified aircraft, satellites, or swamp gas, anything they could come up with. Project Blue Book is shelved in 1969, after the Air Force decides UFOs pose no threat to national security. But according to Jim Mars, the government didn't stop researching them. 
there have been literally dozens of uh, documents pried out of the CIA, out of the military and, and, and others that show that behind the scenes there is an intense interest in what these things are, where they come from and what they're up to. Over the years, Roswell researchers say they've petitioned the government to release whatever information it has with little success. We went after the CIA. We want all your UFO stuff. We don't have any UFO stuff. You do too. You do not. Uh, we argue. We go to court. The judge says do a search. They come back. Oh, gee, we found 900 pages of UFO materials. They said they had none. Even when documents are released, such as this affidavit from the National Security Agency, they're often highly censored. Eventually we got it. The only trouble is it's about 80% blacked out. But why would the government hide what it knows about UFOs, and especially the Roswell incident? Friedman believes it's because the alien bodies are hidden away in secret government laboratories and the wreckage is being studied for scientific advancements. For proof, he points to the revolutionary aircraft developed in the past six decades. Here's our fastest manned craft, the Apollo Command Module, and it looks like a flying saucer. Secret laboratories, engineering wonders. It seems unbelievable, unless you believe there really was an alien crash landing in Roswell. David Rudiak says he has proof of that. It's this 1947 photograph. This is one of seven photos known to have been taken in the office of General Roger Ramey. The photograph is from the day the U.S. military identified the Roswell debris as nothing more than a weather balloon. In it, Ramey is kneeling beside the debris, clutching a piece of paper. Seems pretty unremarkable, until you look closer. The real prize is what Ramey is holding in his hand right here. And you can see as you zoom in that there's writing on this paper. Using a digital photo scanner to enlarge and enhance the document, Rudiak says he can make out the words that prove there was an alien spacecraft. This was a brand new use of the word disc. The uh, flying saucers or flying discs and uh, the terminology had been around for less than two weeks. And so the newspapers, for example, often enclose the word disc in quotes. Then, in the same paragraph, a shocker. The real key to this message is this word right here, which uh, the initial group identified as being the word victims. Rudiak deciphers more of the paragraph. They had the victims, they were going to ship them, I believe, to the chief medical officer at Fort Worth. And when it's all strung together, Rudiak believes the document is nothing short of a bombshell. They found a disc, they found victims, they were shipping the victims out, and then they were going to cover it up. So is it all really true? The debris, the victims, the cover-up. Is this the long-awaited proof that an alien spacecraft did crash outside Roswell? The U.S. government has looked at the same evidence and come to a much different conclusion.